11K, Part 6, Unmasking the Truth and Exposing Lies. In 11K, Part 1 and 2, I clarified the term scripture for us as being the Tanakh. In Part 3, we shared the beautiful art of Kitsugi and how the scriptures heal and make us whole. Part 4, we shed some light on sound doctrine. And in Part 5, we spent some time exploring what itching means in relationship to being excited in the process of becoming. If you have not viewed all five of those teachings, I suggest that you do so now before proceeding with this one. In this teaching, we will look to the word ears as one who hears and is obedient, as this is the heart issue for the bride and wife. Let's continue to unearth treasure found in 2 Timothy chapter 4 so we can finally be given keys to our freedom. Moving on forward from itching, Bechuthkata, from the previous teaching, as a sense of being excited, having a yearning and restless desire to build our spiritual temple through the twin divided yet connected covenants that are separated based upon spiritual maturity, let me emphasize one more time that you cannot give the keys to your car to a two-year-old and expect it to drive. Milk belongs to babes in the car seat, and meat, the car keys, are given to the mature. This now leads us to of their hearing. We are still covering words from 2 Timothy chapter 4. The itching of their hearing. In the Bible I have been packing around with me for years, this verse was actually translated, they have itching ears. Would it surprise you to find out that ears and hearing has the same root word that we found in endure, that of Shema? For review purposes, the low will not endure sound doctrine. The low will not hear and do sound doctrine, dali ul pene chlima, but the L will. In this verse, it's the same case here. Itching ears, or itching of their hearing, now looking at ears and hearing, this is another word that I am unable to pronounce. Yet. So from the root to the trunk and finally to the branches, we can see the movements from the static position to form. The static position is the root Shema which you should be familiar with by now, to hear intelligently and to be obedient. Common theme, an L will Shema and a Lo will not. Here's another hidden gem located within this word, and it is one that we have not yet spent the scene. Let me introduce to you the Ein Tav from the trunk morphology. This Hebrew word means time now and when. Simple interpretation is seeing the purpose of the covenant over time, now and when. So now let's do an interpretation of this trunk word. Listen intelligently and be obedient to the teachings of mother and father being led by them. This is your mark as being conspicuous a memorial of individuality as one having honor, authority, and character, Shem, as you were able to see the purpose through the vision created within their teachings to elevate your beast nature to one who has conquered it. These teachings are meant to propagate and create heirs through the activity of life, and that's heirs like heirs to a throne. A measure of time was given for one to see the purpose of the covenant, et, so that one can finally receive the mark of the Father's covenant and be sealed as the family of God, as one who teaches as they were taught. They're yoked and tamed, carrying the thousandfold Christ anointing. You must first hear and then do. Faith comes by hearing. 
That's from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Here's that verse. And you might have guessed it, <laughs> that hearing in this verse also has the root of Shema. Faith comes when you hear intelligently and then do. So now let's look at the branches of this word, the one that I can't pronounce. We see that we have an added dalit, which we know is the door to revelation that will deliver you, one who is poor, given by a teacher of light so that you can be marked with the sign and signature of the covenant. By the additional dalit, when placed before the mem, we can actually see the Hebrew word dam, meaning blood. This connects us to a previous teaching regarding the threshold covenant at Passover, which is obedience to the God over your temple body so that you are marked with a limp, a different set-apart walk from the rest of the world. Scriptures also tell us that life is in the blood, Leviticus 17.11. So, going through the blood, the threshold covenant brings life through obedience. From the trunk of this word, which is the first movement from the root, it's coming from the root of Shema, which I know you know at this point is hearing and doing. But in this first movement, we can see that the Aleph has been removed. It is our goal that we aim for the sealing of the Aleph to be associated as the family of God. But here in this form, the branches, we see that revelation has been connected to the flesh. Well, why is this? Even going through the process of completing the teachings and the learning cycles of mother and father, we are always connected to our fallen flesh, the corruptible flesh. The noon symbol has duality within it when seen through its constituent letters. One is raised and one fallen. One who has been, has spiritually raised itself and one who is materially subdued. And the Vav in the middle connects to both. Spiritual choices versus material ones. In reality, all choices, even the material ones, affect us spiritually, and our choices spiritually should affect us materially. It is through the activity of life that we always battle duality, good versus evil, day versus night, etc. And in this case, seeing the spiritual choices rather than the material in order to conquer our fallen flesh in which one day we will be trading our corruptible form for the incorruptible one. Bottom line, as it always has been, it's a heart choice. Duality is all about our one major choice in life. Which path in polarity will you walk in? The low, negative service, negative service to self versus L, positive service to others. So let me present the noon in a practical way so that we can actually connect some dots. We must feed ourselves in the flesh and in the spirit as both are connected. So one affects the other. What you eat physically will affect you spiritually. Open to the manifestation of God in our lives or closed. We saw this from the previous teaching. What we eat spiritually should affect what we do physically. The understanding the importance of why we choose food that sustains us in health and wholeness is so that we can heal, be whole, and free of dis-ease. How we see determines this as well. What do you see life through? Spirituality 
or through that of face value, superficially viewing life instead of seeing the hidden and deeper meanings. And what about our relationships? By becoming forgiveness and repentance, teshuvah, slicha, and teshvakun, will affect us emotionally, activated through the mind and will, affecting all who are within our circle of influence as we choose to serve. We first had to consume the process spiritually before we could manifest it physically. All things are connected. So what connects the body flesh to the spirit? Well, the answer to that is the soul, the place of mind, will, and emotions. This is where we are pierced by the Vav in order to produce humility and meekness. What you do in one always affects the other two. What you do in your mind affects your will and emotions. But it goes even deeper than that. We are complex beings that have been divided into three parts, body, soul, and spirit. So what you do within one sphere will directly impact the other two. And just because you may not see or feel this connection between the three does not mean that it is not so. The spiritually mature, the bride and wife, know this as it was revealed to them through the chet chet that was activated in order to spiritually build their temples. The keys to their becoming. The struggle with duality is necessary as it strengthens and tests our resolve in the becoming as one sealed as the family of God through our daily choices in becoming an L. We are creatures that want to take the path of least resistance, the broad path but we know that leads to destruction. This is the low path. It is the narrow L path that few find and few take it. Flipping our 666 beast low to a 999 humble L, body, soul, and spirit, and through sound doctrine, Daliul Pnechlima, that creates the itching ears, Bechut Katha, which is the desire and longing that fuels our obedience, Shema, to the twin covenants, teachings that are divided based on spiritual maturity as the milk and meat. This produces the restless desire to continue on this journey of becoming, building our spiritual temple body, one choice at a time, one day at a time, choosing to see the spiritual meaning in all things through body, soul, and spirit. We must hear the revelation through the teachings and then do them, Shema, to become El, the strong leaders who teach. This is the awakening of the bride to become the wife who has great freedom and great responsibility through the perfect law and teachings of liberty. Or else you will stay as a low, a prideful one that is never teachable, who is fast asleep, missing the opportunity presented to all and having the door shut to them, and the key never given to them. It all boils down to choice, a choice that begins in the heart of your mind. Choose wisely. Shalom, shalom.